Did you really? That here, I need a sheet with the conference sign in. I hit, I, we were, it was muted, and I hit the earphones instead of the phone number. Oh, the phone number is here. Yeah. All right, good afternoon, everyone. It is 1234, and we will call to order the April 22nd, 2020 meeting of the Fox Canyon Groundwater Management Agency Board of Directors um, and ask the clerk to uh, take the roll. Chair West? Yes. Director Bennett? Yes. Director Borchard? Director Borchardt. Dave, if you want, I can hear you. Is that? There you go. I'm here. And Director Mobley. I'm here. Director Tremblay. Here. Thank you. With that, I'd ask everyone on the conference and everyone watching elsewhere to please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And Madam Clerk, let's see. Um, I guess now we will recess the general session into to go to closed session to return at 1.30. And so I guess we should each mute our microphones and ask Keely to control the master.
I don't know if you guys are out, but I'm not able to hear anything. Can anybody hear me?
Jill, can you hear me? Hi, Keely. It's Jill. I'm testing the mic. Hi, I can hear you. They're not back from closed session yet. Jill, can you hear me? Jill, can you hear me? Yes, now I can. Okay, perfect. They're not back from closed session yet, so I'm going to re-mute myself until they come back. Okay, thanks, Kiwi. Keely, we're, we're taking a, um, a five minute break, so we'll be back with you in five minutes. Closed session just, just Okay, ended. perfect. Thank you. Thank you, I heard. You heard?
This, this is Steve. I was cut off for quite some time there. I'm back. Are we out of closed session now? We haven't resumed the general session yet. We're just waiting another minute or two. We'll be we'll to do so. Great. Thanks. But we're out of closed session, right? Yes. Great. Okay. I'll be right back. Dave and Mike, you want might want to mute your mics there. All right, it is 136. We have uh, returned to the general session from closed session to report that there was no action taken in uh, closed session that needs to be reported out. And with that, we'll resume the regular agenda and ask for an agenda review. Any changes? Uh, thank you, uh, Chair West. Uh, we staff would request that um, you uh, pull item nine. Uh, we'll bring it back to you the, uh, on the regular agenda in May, if that's all right with you. If there's no objection, fine. We'll pull item nine from today's agenda. Um, and proceed then with public comments. Comments, an opportunity for public to uh, submit questions or comments to the board on matters not otherwise on today's agenda. And I'll ask the clerk of the board if there are any such comments. No comments, Chair. Okay, any board member comments? Um, let me, let me um, begin with one. First, I'd like to newest member of the board, Mr. Trembley, taking over for Ms. Cravens. Um, welcome. You've got large, large shoes to fill. I'm uh, looking forward to working with you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, and I do have large shoes to fill. And the second item, and this is a maybe more of a personal one. You know, we have come together lots of times over the years in the boardroom, shoulder to shoulder on the board and face to face with the, the general public. And this this Zoom process and the broadcast process is certainly, you know, I certainly appreciate the technology, but it um, really doesn't replace the face-to-face -face contact and the direct communication and discussion with the public that we've gotten so used to. It, um, this is the third public agency meeting that I've chaired on Zoom. And, and the process has really, um, it's funny, we get, to, we get to be sort of water geeks in this after a while. This process, no offense, Jill, uh, and the process has um, uh, really pointed out to me, though, that, that what we do is more about people than it is about water. And it's sort of ironic that it's the absence of the people that made me feel that most directly. I, I just wanted to point that out and, and extend um, you know, my wishes to see all of you guys again and ladies close up, but also to be back in front of the of the public and having those conversations um, that I that I miss. So, uh, with that, any other director comments? All right, we'll move on then to the consent agenda. There are only a couple of items. If there's if no one has any questions, the chair will approve a motion, uh, entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. I move for approval of the consent agenda. Is there a second? Second, Steve. Uh, Question, uh, Keeley, because this is an online meeting, does the consent agenda need a roll call? No. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, let's move on to the regular agenda. Item number seven. I'm not sure who's presenting that. It's, let's see. It is, is, is me. Uh, good afternoon, Chair okay. and Directors. My name is Keely Royas, the Fox Can Canyon Groundwater Management Agency Clerk of the Board. Item okay. seven on today's agenda is for board member appointments and committee assignments. Fox Canyon board members serve two um, staggered two-year terms with the five cities and agricultural terms expiring this past February. The January 3rd City Selection Committee meeting, Camarillo Mayor 
Anthony Tremblay was appointed the city's representative and Oxnard City Council member Burt Perello was selected as the alternate. The Ventura County Farm Bureau and Ventura County Agricultural Association have jointly nominated David Borchard for a reappointment as the farmer's representative and William Terry as the alternate. In 2012, your board approved the formation of three committees, the executive, the fiscal, and the operations. Um, the agency recommends your board elect a chair and vice chair and make assignments for the two member agency board executive fiscal and operations committees for the year 2020. Thank you. Are there any public comments on this item? No. Any suggestions? I would like to make a motion that we keep the current chair and vice chair as is for another year. I'll second, second that motion. <laughs> there's, a, there's a motion in the second. Um, I guess we need a roll call for this. Best. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you, Keely. Did you? Chair West. Yeah, uh, yes. Director Bennett. Yes. Director Mobley. Yes. Director Tremblay. Yes. Director Borchard. There's also the question of committee assignments with respect to the three committees. Um, the, the executive committee has been the, the chair and the vice chair. The fiscal committee heretofore was the was myself and um, uh, Charlotte Craven, and the operations committee was uh, when it was last constituted was uh, Director Bennett, Director Aranio. At that point, um, it would make sense to me if we wanted to basically keep the same um, constituents of those committees and simply replacing. Um, Ms. Craven's position with Mr. Tremblay and Mr. Aranio's position with Director Mobley. Does that work for everybody or anybody care to have anything changed? No objection for me. Works for me. Make that motion. A second? Second. All right. Can we get a roll call, Keely? Chair West. Yes. Director Bennett. Yes. Director Mobley. Yes. Director Tremblay. Aye. Director Borch. All right, we'll move on to item number eight then, the um, Groundwater Sustainability Plan Annual Reports. Mr. Chair, I cannot hear the speaker. Okay, start over again. Good afternoon, Chair West and directors. For the record, my name is Kathleen Rydell. I'm here to present item eight, Groundwater Sustainability Plan's annual report. My uh, staff report is in the agenda packet. The annual reports have been prepared. They have been submitted to DWR and they are available on the agency website and on the DWR website. With that being said, I would like to introduce Dr. Jill Weinberger to make the presentation for this item. Thank you, Kathleen. Uh, for the record, my name is Jill Weinberger. I am with DUDEC, the consultant that prepared the groundwater sustainability plans and now the annual reports that were due uh, this beginning of this month. So uh, as we are all aware, the, the groundwater sustainability plans were adopted in December and submitted in January, but the legislation was written in such a way to require an annual report uh, in April following the January submission. So we, we prepared the annual reports for 
the Oxnard, Pleasant Valley, and Las Posas Valley basins, and Kathleen has already said, those, those went into DWR uh, on time at the beginning of this month. The annual reports um, cover the groundwater conditions in the basins in the preceding water year. Now, in this particular case, we uh, had to cover the water years between the groundwater sustainability plans and this submission. So the, the groundwater data that went into the groundwater sustainability plans ended uh, in 2015, water year 2015. So these particular annual reports covered water years 2016, 17, 18, and 19. Next year, when these are due again, next April, that will only have to cover water year 2020. Um, what goes into the annual reports? Well, we have a detailed description uh, uh, and graphical representation of the groundwater elevations in the basins, uh, quantification of the groundwater extractions to the extent known. And I should say that the agency is still working to convert between a calendar year and move towards a water year extraction reporting system. So the 2019 extractions that were recorded in these annual reports actually ended in July of 2019 because of the current reporting system. And then there's also some additional reconciliation and catch up ha that has to happen with those reporting. So, the groundwater extractions as they're known at the time uh, that we can submit. The surface water supply uh, that was used or available for use in the basin, total water use, uh, the change in groundwater storage, and lastly, but perhaps most importantly from DWR's perspective, a description of the progress towards implementing the GSP. So the bulk of the effort uh, in these uh, reports really went into Characterizing the groundwater conditions in the basin, looking at uh, groundwater elevations across the network of monitoring wells that we have, and converting that then into a change in storage, and reporting that to DWR with a description of the progress towards implementing the GSP. So what we did in order to go from groundwater elevation to groundwater and storage Groundwater elevations are measured uh, in the fall and the spring of each year. Uh, so we took the spring groundwater elevations where they're known and we subtracted from the previous spring. So if groundwater elevations went up, you can imagine that would convert into an increase in storage in the basin. And if they went down, then that was a, a decrease in storage and to actually do that calculation, we take the measured change in groundwater elevation and we use the aquifer properties that were described uh, thoroughly in the numerical groundwater models of the basins uh, to convert from a change in elevation to a change in groundwater storage. In Oxnard and Pleasant Valley, um, we see that Groundwater elevations generally rose in the in water years 2017 and 2019, uh, which were wetter than average years, and they in between those springs, I should say. So, you know, between spring of 2016 and spring of 2017, the water elevation went up because 2017 was a greater, uh, higher than average water year. It then declined in 2018, which was a uh, uh, drier than average year and increased again in 2019, which was wetter than average. So in Oxnard and Pleasant Valley, storage increased in 2017 and 2019 and decreased uh, in 2016 and 2018. And of course that's tied to precipitation and uh, the availability of water to uh, be used for recharge in Oxnard. In Las Posas, uh, we saw a decline in groundwater storage year over year in both the west and the east Las Posas Valley basins. 
man in the management areas there, uh, independent of precipitation. And that's consistent with the hydrogeologic conceptual model that shows that direct surface recharge uh, takes a much longer time to impact aquifer levels in, in the Las Posas Valley Basin. So that's the, the summary of what we found uh, as far as GSP implementation progress. Um, you know, the Fox Canyon uh, Groundwater Management Agency has been thinking about this for quite a long time and has been proactive in their approach um, to, to the GSP and the GSP implementation. So uh, some of the progress towards implementation actually uh, began concurrently with preparing the GSPs. Uh, the agency and agency staff requested uh, installation of monitoring wells in the Pleasant Valley Basin and the Oxnard uh, Subbasin from DWR Technical Support Services. And uh, those monitoring wells have been installed or in one case are in the process of being installed. Uh, those will help with things like cross boundary flows and further characterizing groundwater elevation change, which goes into groundwater and storage. Uh, and agency staff also uh, work with DWR to get uh, stakeholder facilitation services through DWR's facilitation support services program to begin actively planning uh, stakeholder advisory roles. And so it's, it's quite clear the importance, as Director West has already said, the importance of stakeholders in this process. Uh, and uh, it's a shame that I cannot be there in person today, and we're not all there in person today uh, to further this effort for stakeholder outreach, but uh, the agency moves forward with DWR in, in that role and that capacity right now. Um, and lastly, uh, the agency is working towards development of the post-GSP work plan, um, prioritizing projects and recommendations, uh, looking at feasibility studies, and additional ongoing monitoring. So that is what we have uh, in the annual reports, and uh, I very much look forward to the time when we can discuss this in person, but uh, for now, I'm happy to take any questions. Any questions or comments from the board? Hearing none, then, um, Madam Clerk, are there questions or comments from the public on this item? There is one comment, Chair West. Jurgen Bramko from Southland Sod um, submitted a comment stating, I have come to the podium several times to ask how the three DWR Sigma basins under FCGSA jurisdiction will be managed going forward, separately or collectively. The Fox Canyon Aquifer underlies all three. Past FCGMA management has been collective, yet DWR Sigma designated three basins. There are now three separate GSPs. This agenda item asks that you receive and file three separate GSP annual reports. Is this the next step in departing from past collective management of the Fox Canyon Aquifer? as a whole to management by DWR basin boundary lines. Um, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to respond to that. Well, let me, I guess let's, let's ask, uh, let me ask staff, is there anyone on staff who is prepared to answer that question or is that something we need to revisit? Well, let me, and let me, let me jump in and, and not answer Jurgen's question. I think from, from my perspective, at least, I think the, the emphasis certainly in the last few years has been to comply with Sigma and develop basin plans for each of the respective basins and management strategies for each as well. However, 
you know, respecting the fact that the basins, you know, to the extent that they do, do communicate and making sure that, that allowances are made to the extent that the, you know, the science supports that. Beyond, beyond that, I'm not in a position to answer Jurgen further. I don't know if anyone else has a better answer. This is uh, Jeff Pratt, GMA staff. Um, your board uh, has not had that policy discussion. I think what Jurgen refers to is in the past, um, we've, your board has acted on a collective basis with all, uh, with all the basins in tow. Um, that is a policy discussion that your board will have as we move forward with the GSP implementation. Uh, we hope to have something to for your consideration probably by June um, as we get to the point where that becomes a more critical question. So your board, that, that will come up with the special area management plans um, at, or, or individual areas inside of basins as well as the basins collectively. Um, we were asked to submit them separately by DWR. That was a requirement, and that's why we did it. It doesn't presage uh, any decisions your board has made in that regard yet. Thank you. This is a, um, if there are no further questions, this is simply a receive and file. Um, thank you, Jill. It was nice seeing you again. And um, we would, I guess we need a motion to receive and file. Second. Second. All in favor. Aye. All right. All right. Okay. Item number 10. This is um, resolution 2020-03. Good afternoon, Chair West, members of the board. I'm Kim Lowe, Fox Canyon staff. Um, and so I'll be uh, presenting this item. Um, can you all hear me okay? All right. So this item follows a uh, discussion at the February board meeting. I'm going to uh, share my screen now and uh, provide a uh, PowerPoint. All right, and so um, oops. there we go. It was uh, hanging up for a sec. So um, as you recall, I mean, as you know, the board adopted the new pumping allocation uh, ordinance for the Oxnard and Pleasant Valley Basins in October. The initial allocations are based on a uh, 2005 to 2014 average annual pumping during that base period. And that new allocation system goes into effect um, on October 1st of this year. Uh, there's recognized that there may be a significant number of variance requests and your board tasks the executive committee to uh, consider the process for handling those variance requests, which they did um, in well attended meetings on in July and October of last year and February of this year. At um, the at your February 26th board meeting, uh, your uh, board considered the recommendations of the executive committee and staff and uh, um, approved those recommendations and asked us to come back with a resolution to uh, formalize those recommendations. And that's what we're here for today. So I'll go through um, briefly what the resolution contains and what the process is. Um, so one of the things that was under consideration is the fact that there may be um, and there are uh, wells for which there were not uh, semi-annual extraction statements filed during the 10-year um, base period. And so if there isn't an extraction, it, it would be um, basically go into the average as a zero. And there needed to be a process by which um, those extractions could be uh, recorded and brought into the allocation 
um, average for the uh, allocation moving forward. And uh, so with five or more years of reported extractions, so uh, at least 50% of the extractions have been reported during that base period, um, the process would be that the allocations would be determined based on average annual extractions for reported periods. And I should explain this is a process by which um, the well owner would apply for uh, recognition of this. Um, unpaid extraction charges and interest on that would be due. And then civil penalties would be based on the average annual extractions and number of uh, unreported periods. And um, that would be based on this tiered table based on uh, the amount of extractions and, and the unreported uh, periods. And you see there's up to 10, those are semi-annual periods. Um, this is uh, the same as what was presented at the uh, executive committee and at your board me uh, members or board meeting in February. If there were less than five years reported, um, then these would be addressed on a case by case basis. The operator would have to, the burden of proof to show that they were in fact extracting from the wells and, and uh, utilizing that groundwater during the extraction or during the base period, and they would be subject to payment of full civil penalties on um, and unpaid extraction charges on those extractions. If there were well was a well or wells that were not registered during this period, um, then uh, that applicant would have to uh, receive board approval for any variance seeking allocation from that. Uh, that uh, those extractions would have uh, violated quite a number of uh, agency ordinance code requirements and uh, would be subject to the full penalties for those violations. Also, a non-registered well has no allocation, so based on our agency ordinance code, every extraction is a, a surcharge extraction, so that would be, um, uh, would also apply. And uh, again, of course, the burden of proof would be on the applicant to provide evidence of uh, the amount that was abstracted. Uh, your board recognized that there could be extenuating circumstances. And uh, so the uh, resolution allows that your board on an appeal may decrease civil penalties based on these extenuating circumstances or other mitigating factors, including the applicant's lack of culpability in causing the violation, the absence of past violations, either of similar or different nature on the same or different property under the same ownership financial burden on the applicant, or other factors as deemed relevant by your board. Uh, your board also recognized that there were other types of variance requests uh, for changing crops or change in land use, or um, from an applicant that had during the base period received water from the water purveyor and could continue to do so, but would uh, wants to apply to extract that groundwater instead of receiving it from the purveyor. It's recognized that these types of variance requests would be, um, would affect the percentage of total sustainable yield of the allocations of the other extractors in the basin because it's a, a you know, net zero sum of how much uh, can be extracted. And so um, these requests must be reviewed by a variance review committee represented of groundwater extractors in the basins. And then that committee's recommendations would be provided to your board for consideration of the variance request. Uh, there would be a variance application processing fee of $250, which would be refunded if the variance process identified an error in agency records, uh, for instance, a uh, um, missed key uh, in the database or something like that. Your board also uh, 
agreed with the executive committee's recommendation that um, civil penalties collected from this variance request processing uh, exceeding the administrative costs be used for the benefit of the basin. So um, staff will uh, add a new designated account and those civil penalties collected during the variance processing will be held in that designated account. Um, will account for time and expenses for variance processing um, in the aggregate. And uh, if there is a uh, processing time that's not covered by the administrative uh, application fee, then we would uh, um, reimburse that from the, those uh, civil penalties, uh, but the balance of the civil penalty would remain in the designated account for you as your board should direct. And so that's uh, the summary, uh, the, um, the designation of the um, disposition of those civil penalties is not part of the resolution, but that will be done in parallel. But the recommendation is that your board adopt resolution number 2020-03 establishing policies and procedures for granting variances from the initial extraction allocation under the ordinance to establish an allocation system for the Oxnard and Pleasant Valley groundwater basins. So. Um, this is Steve. Um, I think uh, this reflects a lot of good work and, and thought through. Uh, I'm comfortable with it. I'm happy to make the motion unless there are uh, issues that uh, other board members want to speak about. Okay. There's before we before I ask for a second, let me just ask, are there any other comments or questions from the board? And then we'll go to public comment and we'll come back and deal with your motion, Steve. This is Dave, one comment um, with the and this is a question for Tim. Regarding appeals, I know that one thing we discussed at executive committee was the concept of. I'm not able to hear, Director. I'm not able to hear, Director Borcher. Sorry. Can you hear me now? Yes, much better. Okay. Uh, a question for Tim. This is something, something we discussed at executive committee uh, regarding appeals. That the, the criteria be uh, defined well enough so that we didn't have just a flood of appeals from everyone who didn't like what their uh, GMA letter said. Uh, one thing that stuck out to me, for example, was uh, an issue of cost, maybe. Um, maybe what does staff consider to be significant cost? Um, your comment was going in and out. I'm not sure everyone, everyone heard. Kim, were you able to hear the question clearly? I believe Director Borchard was asking whether staff had a, um, a criteria or criterion for what would be considered a uh, significant cost. And so I, I would just say that, that I, I think Director Borchard was referring to the um, the item on. Uh, I'm trying to uh, find it here uh, on an appeal to your board regarding extenuating circumstances, and uh, staff does not, has not established that the um, uh, executive committee and board uh, did not. Uh, did not come to um, identifying specific criteria for those extenuating circumstances. So uh, uh, we worked with uh, agency counsel to try and uh, capture those uh, considerations for your board, uh, similar to how they are considered in other uh, appeal language in the agency uh, ordinance code as well as other resolutions. So really that that would be uh, your board's uh, consideration and, and 
well, that that's really basically it. I'm trying to prevent this, maybe the possibility of nearly every meter owner having some sort of appeal based on, on, a, on a personal concept of what they think is, is a viable appeal versus what, you know. David, David this is Steve. David, this is Steve. I think when you turn your head a little bit to the right, that's when we don't hear you. When you turn your head a little to the left, we can hear you. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm making my comment trying to, to hopefully that the criteria for appeals is defined well enough so that we just don't have a flood of them. Uh, everybody considering they have an appeal versus uh, things that are... are more legitimate, like we discussed. Uh, I, I think of the Nature Conservancy situation, for example, when they described uh, discovering after a land purchase of, of a situation of unreporting and, and now being subject to a, to a bunch of uh, penalties. I, I consider that a legitimate appeal um, versus someone who just is skirting the rules and, and not uh, reporting and, and now somehow wanting a, a consideration because of uh, it's going to cost them a lot of money. Uh, Director Borchert and, and uh, board, I, I think that's why we have in there uh, criteria such as the applicant's lack of culpability in causing the violation is one of the criteria for your board to consider and the absence of past violations on uh, the same or different property and financial burden is just one of those criteria. Um, so that that um, first criteria would seem like it may apply to the specific case that you mentioned. Okay. So, so that would be utilized by staff or the executive officer to somehow screen the potential appeals to winnow things down to do something that's more legitimate. So maybe maybe the uh, there's some confusion about how this would be processed. So um, all of the regular types of um, variance requests, um, if they're uh, whether they're maybe corrections, uh, which isn't really technically a variance, or if there's five or more years of reporting uh, available, those uh, cases that we went through, those would be. Um, processed by staff. Of course, any staff decision or, you know, which is ultimately the decision of the executive officer, um, any executive officer decision can always be appealed to your board for any uh, ordinance item or, uh, or resolution item. But um, staff thinking is that really the principal types of variance requests that we would anticipate would come to your board for decision are those where there were um, less than half of the reported period or the base period submitted extraction reports. Um, the, the, if it was completely unregistered well and they've never filed any paperwork with the agency and were extracting during the base period in violation of um, ordinance code or in the, uh, what we were calling other variance requests, where it's requests for additional extraction um, for a new use, um, which would be reviewed by that variance review committee of uh, pumpers in the basin and then come to your board for consideration of those recommendations. Thank you. Any other questions or comments from the board before I ask for public comment? Hearing none, then Madam Clerk, are there any public comments on this item? Yes, I have one. It is from Jeanette Lombardo for the California Food and Agribusiness Advocates. And she states, it is my understanding that the current deadline for filing a variance is June 30th, 2020. Due, the, due to the California governor's executive stay at home order and the County of Ventura health officer declared local health emergency and be well at home order resulting from the COVID-19 is it possible
possible to obtain a 30-day extension on this deadline. I feel this is a reasonable request given the effective date is not until October 1st, 2020. Well, it's, you know, in looking at the resolution, I don't know that there is a deadline in this resolution um, for the submission of a variance request. That's perhaps an item we can take up on a separate agenda item coming up at the next meeting. I think it sounds like a reasonable request that we ought to discuss, but I don't know that we can do that in the context of this resolution. So let me let me return then there is a, a motion by Director Bennett to adopt the resolution. Is, is there are no other questions or comments? Is there a second? A second. Okay, let me to roll call on this please. Chair West? Yes. Director Bennett? Yes. Director Mobley? Yes. Director Trembley? Yes. Director Borchard? Yes. Thank you. Let's move on then to item number 11. Uh, Chair, Chair West, par pardon yes. me, before you do that, um, the recommendation to restrict the use of civil penalties collected under the resolution was not captured in the resolution itself. So if the board uh, wants to approve that recommendation, we'll need a separate motion on that. I see, I wasn't aware of that, okay. So then as indicated in the staff presentation, is there a motion to let's segregate the penalty funds and, and have them directed as, um, separately directed by the board, except to the extent needed to cover administrative costs for administering the variance program. Yeah, I'll make that motion. And is there a second? I'll second it. And we'll need a roll call on that motion then. Chair West. Yes. Director Bennett. Yes. Director Mobley. Yes. Director Trembley. Yes. Director Borchard. Yes. Well, let's move on to item number 11. Deferring civil penalties. Good afternoon, Chair West. Yep. Board, yes, that, that's mine also. Um, and so, uh, let me see uh, here, I'm trying to share my screen to bring up um, the, uh, bring up that item and here we, I'm not seeing that right now. Um, shoot. Well, um, I can just talk to it. So, as your board and everybody knows, uh, the state of California declared a state of emergency on March 4th, 2020. Um, the county of Ventura declared a local health emergency on March 12th, 2020. So this uh, recommendation by staff is that your board adopt a resolution, this resolution 2020-04, which would defer accrual of civil penalties and interest imposed by resolution number 2019-1. And this would apply from the date of the um, declaration locally here in the county on March 12th through the end of the fiscal year on June 30th. Uh, the penalties and interest that are uh, identified in Resolution 2019 are uh, applied to failure to submit an extraction statement, pay extraction charges or interest or surcharges, submit uh, an application for 
efficiency allocation, report a change in owner operator, submit notification of any change in flow meter equipment or calibration, submit proof of installation of AMI or submit monthly extraction uh, report. So um, this would not uh, waive the penalties or interest. It would uh, defer um, collection of that and it would defer accrual of interest for, um, for non uh, payment of civil penalties for that period of time from March 12th through June 30th, um, recognizing the, uh, the difficulties people are having right now during the, this coronavirus pandemic emergency. Questions or comments from the board? Mr. Chair? Yes. Kim, I'm not sure I understand the concept of, of the deferral. Are you saying it, it would not accrue during the subject time period? You're saying it would not be waived? It would not be, that Director Tremblay, that's correct. Um, the uh, civil penalties would not be waived, but non-payment um, or uh, would normally be subject to a $50 a day. Um, well, some of the things, $50 a day, um, civil penalty, that would be uh, waived. So there, during, if there was a, a daily penalty for something under 2019-1, uh, that would not uh, apply during that period. And then there's an interest um, charge of a percent and a half for uh, unpaid uh, fees or including penalties and surcharges, and that would not accrue during that time. So just to make it clear, so if it's deferred, then it is not, it, do, it do, would not accrue between March 12 to June 30, correct? That's correct. Okay. And second question, if I can, Mr. Chair. Um, if hypothetically the emergency declaration lasts beyond uh, June 30 into the following fiscal year, the next fiscal year, then the board could consider a separate resolution pertaining to that time period? Yes, Director Tremblay, yes, they could. Okay, thank you. Any other questions or comments from the board? Madam Clerk, are there any public comments on this item? No public comments, Chair. Thank you, then is there a motion to adopt resolution 2020-04? I'll move. A second. I will go ahead and second the motion. Now we need a roll call. Chair West. Yes. Director Bennett. Yes. Director Mobley. Yes. Director Tremblay. Yes. Director Borchard. Yes. Um, that concludes the business for the general session. Um, we will adjourn to the next notice meeting unless there's other business that I'm not aware of. I, 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 I do have one uh, important piece of business. Uh, if everybody could look at uh, Director West on the screen and you see those, the, the back of his shirt, it looks kind of like he's an angel or something. See how that shirt keeps puffing up like, like that? Uh, well, no, not, not your shoulders. No, just hold still. You see the, you see how it, it's like, anyway, it's been, it's been fascinating to watch. So anyway, <laughs> hope you're blessed with the angels. That's important business. I'll say goodbye. Thank you. Thank you so much. We're adjourned. Thank you all. Thank you.